Okay, Jack Hanlon, and it is October 25th, 2000, and we are east of Minneota, Manitoba. And can I get your name and your rank in the Army and the Air Force, please? Uh, my name is John Monroe Hanlon. In the Army, uh, my rank was Lance Corporal, my number was 51758. And what else did you want to know? In the Air Force, your rank in the, the Air, Air Force. Force. My rank was pilot officer. My number was J96313. Yep. That's it. Uh, and where did you grow up, Jack? I, uh, I was born in the house we're sitting in right now. I lived all of my first 19 years right in Minneota. And uh, the next five years I was in the service. And then I returned to, to Minneota and farmed. Okay. Uh, when did you enlist in the services? In uh, 1940. And that was in the Army, was in it? In the Army, yes. And then went overseas with the uh, Army? I yeah. went overseas with the 5th Armored Division and transferred to the Royal Canadian Air Force in 1942. Okay. And did you have to come back to Canada then? Yes, we spent a little while in England and then we came back to Canada and I took my my elementary flying out of Burden okay. uh, and my secondary flying out of Brandon. Oh, so you were right around home the whole time then. That's right. Did you have to go through Manning Depot? Jack? No, we we were trained we were trained soldiers by then and we didn't didn't have to use that part of the You already military. knew how to march no. then. <laughs> So you uh, came overseas and uh, came back from overseas to Verdun mm -hmm. first, yes. and that's where you took your elementary training. Yes. And were you training as a pilot? Yes, I trained uh, as a pilot in Verdun and Brandon, and couldn't complete the, the course in Brandon and went flight engineer. Oh, okay. And I, they transferred me from Brandon to St. Thomas, Ontario. And I took a, a, a short flight engineer course and, and was sent overseas. Okay. What type of classes did you have to take in Verdun? Um, was it ground, like were you in classrooms or is that the first time you got up in a plane in Verdun? The, the, the training in Verdun was all flying. Uh, all flying. Uh, had and, uh, yeah. had you been in a, in a plane before that? Oh yes, I, yeah. We had it in England. We we'd done a little, yes. Okay, so it wasn't a big shock to you to no, get up no, in an aircraft. No. Okay, and then to Brandon, and that's where you uh, took your service flight training. Yes. Yeah. What was Brandon like in in 1940s? We, uh, the 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 station. I didn't stay on it because I was married. Okay. And so I we lived in Brandon. Okay. So your wife, Pearl, came over before you came yes, back? Yes, my wife followed me back um, from England. Oh, and so we, yeah. she stayed with me in Burden and Brandon and then went down to St. Thomas. Oh. And when I went back over, she came back to the farm at Minneota. And stayed here with your family? And stayed you here with my dad and mother, yeah. Oh, okay. So how long were you in, in Burden and Brandon area then? You, probably you probably about three or f three months. And did you get home to visit your parents at all while you were training or did you Yes, yes, I just don't recall. Oh yeah, we weren't that far away anyway, yeah, so yeah. More we did. Brandon. Yeah. Right. Train from yeah. Right into Minneota. Oh, mm. so you could just take the train home mm. for mm. holidays mm. or whenever you needed to. And then you went to St. Thomas. In Ontario? Yes. And and what type of training did you do there? Well, it was just, uh, just flying training, what we had to know as a flight engineer. And uh, along with our flying ability, we, w that's what we were selected for was, was uh, flight engineers. So it, it all dovetailed together and it worked quite well. We, did, it, well. we weren't there that long, probably a couple of months. 
I just don't recall. Was there were there people that you went to the schools with here in Brandon that went to St. Thomas with no, you, or just no. all all new people? To yeah, you? yeah. Were there men from other countries in St. Thomas? No, or? it was Canadian. Canadian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, did you get around St. Thomas at all and see any of the community there? Or? We, we li lived in St. Thomas, and, and uh, the, the, the training facilities were just outside the, the city. Did you have to find housing yourself, or did the... Yes, we had, yeah, to, we had, to, we had to locate our own, yeah. Did, did they give you extra pay to live off No, state? no, there oh. was no, no. Okay. Is there... And you graduated from St. Thomas then as a yes, we gra as a flight engineer. And what was your graduation like? Do you remember it at all? Or well, it was I suppose just the same the CO of the station, and we, we all graduated as, as sergeants. Okay. And w what was a flight engineer? What was their role in the aircraft then? Well, they, they, their role was just about the same as the American second pilot. We handled the throttles and we looked after the fuel and uh, uh, and then, then we had we had to help the bomb aimer in bombing and we manned the, the, the gun in the front turret and we had uh, numerous jobs. Right. So you were the helper in the aircraft? That's right. Okay. So you had to train in bomb aiming and, and those kind of things as well? So yeah, we had to know, know the, the workings <laughs> of, of the bomb, and we had to set it up for the bomb aimer, warm oh. the skidways, all oh. the whole thing, yes. Oh, neat. I didn't know that. And so once you graduated, did you go right overseas? Or did yes. You, did you get any leave after graduation to come back? or? No, you no didn't. I didn't. I, no, I never came back to, to Minnesota, no. And went out? To Quebec or Nova Scotia, did you went after? to Nova Scotia and over yeah. and over. And what was your trip overseas like then? W it was right during the middle of the war. Would mm -hmm. it have been? What was it like to go? Over? It, it, as I remember, our, 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 our my first trip, I went over. It, it was took fourteen days it, with, with the Canadian Army. With Louis Pasteur, was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We were. Zigzagging back and forth, and we were from great coats down to 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 shorts <laughs> before <them>. we landed. <laughs> the second trip I went over was relatively easy. It took I think four four or five days. I oh, don't recall. A lot quicker that time. But we th most of the trip troop ships traveled by themselves. They didn't travel in convoy. They, they traveled in convoy for a little ways out, and then they were too fast for the convoy, so You're they left them. Own. Did you find it hard to be out on the sea, being a prairie boy? No, or? no, it d never bothered me at all. It, uh, no, it didn't. It, uh, we, uh, uh, when I came back the first time, I, I came to New York oh. with, with, with American soldiers and whatnot, oh. and then we came from, from New York up to by train to... Uh, to burden, I guess. Oh I just really? forget now. Yeah, to burden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you had trained and you were going back overseas, where did you, uh, where did you go first overseas? Did you end up in Scotland or England or? No, I, uh, we we ended in Wales. We went, and uh, from Wales we got our posting to our squadron. And where? What squadron was that? I, I flew with four three four, and they flew out of Croft. And did you have to take any training once you got to England again, or, or were you right on to an You were always training. <laughs> you, you trained as much as you, and maybe, yeah, it's maybe a little more than what your, your uh, operational trips. You were always training. Right. What type of aircraft did that squadron I fly? I flew one trip in, in the Halifax and the rest in Lancaster Bombers. And is that where you met up with your crew then, once yes, you got to the yes. station there? And did you know any of them, or they were no, all? No, I never, I never, uh, never knew them before. One of them came from from Abernethy, Saskatchewan, which is not that far from here. But I never knew all of them at all. No. 
And they were all Canadian. They were all Canadian, it yeah. It was well, all that's not quite right. There was one of them that wore USA patches. Oh. Um, he joined in Winnipeg. He joined the Air Force in Winnipeg. We never did know why he wore them, but he must have had been able to wear them. But I, we don't know. We never knew where where he came from. Right. Um, what was it like over in, in England? Was it quite different than Canada? We liked it in, in, uh, in, in England. I did anyway. I liked it. it uh, um, the weather is, uh, is quite a bit different than the prairies, but we liked it. it the, go the green is green over there. <laughs> and uh, we didn't care maybe so much for the, the backward weather, fog and, uh, and dampness, but uh, we were well clothed and well looked after that way, so we didn't have any any surmountable problems. At least I never had any. Yet, so as far as health was concerned, I never had any. And did you did you get to send letters back and forth quite a bit while you were overseas? Or oh yes, yes, we were allowed to write. Used to write. <laughs> yeah, we knew. We were told, you know, n not to s to send anything about operations or training, but other than that, just our personal life. And, and I don't think. I don't know. Uh, there was a certain amount of, uh, of uh, interference with mail, but I don't think a great lot. So you always got your letters eventually? Yes, yes, yeah. Well, that's good. And what was the base like where you were? Was it, was it only your squadron at that base? Or there were two, two squadrons flew out of there, yeah. And, and did you have uh, barracks to stay in on base? Yes, or? they were... They were uh, Steel Nason huts. How many men would stay in those huts? The oh, I'll have to think back, but um, probably about eight of us. And were they comfortable or? Oh yes, they were comfortable enough actually. Yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. And was that a base that was created just during the war, or was that when? Yes, the yeah, oh yeah, it was just yeah, a yeah, and it was demolished. I, I had a letter from from. Uh, an Air Force fellow that I'd met that lived right there, and he r wanted to raise money to try and save that base, but it was demolished, yes. After the war was over. Mm. Did you get to go on leave while you were in England? Yes, we, we uh, yes. And of course, being there before with the Army, I was quite familiar with where to go and quite familiar with the money and quite familiar with the people, and even Married a woman there, so it. <laughs> and did you travel far from base on your leave, or did you stay around around the general? Well, I I went went to Glasgow, mm -hmm. but most of the shorter leaves were weekends and whatnot. And no, I I, I maybe w once or twice went into London, which I knew how to get around London, because in the army I I was stationed very close to London. Okay. So I. Um, well, you you went up to northern Scotland too. Well, uh, in the army, I yeah. yeah. Well, I first leave, I I went as far went up the garden stump, as far pretty as far as you could go, no trees or nothing. She <laughs> was barren, barren land. It uh, it was very nice. It uh, and and what about rationing or anything? Were you affected by that at all? Your base, or, or were you? The food uh, in in the Air Force was very adequate and very good. In the Army, it was a little questionable, but it was good. It was good. Yeah, the uh, and the rations. Uh, I don't recall having any problem with rations. We, when we went on leave, we we got a a ration book, but we would just take it to the people that we knew and give it to them. And right. Yeah, was, uh, was the Air Force a lot different than the Army, Jack? Yes, it was quite a bit. We were a little higher rank and uh, we were doing a different job. And it, uh, yes, it was, we were what they called gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
Did you ever get to see any of the men that you were in the Army with once you were back over as Air Force? or? Never seen any of them until I came back home. Oh. But I joined up with three, three young men right from our, the same town, from Minneota. Right. So I, and they came back to Minneota. And so I knew I'd seen them most of my life. Right. So you saw them afterwards. Mm -hmm. And ha when did you arrive at your base in, in uh, England? What, what year was that that you? 44. 44. And so you flew operations from that base until the end of the war? or? Yes, until I was shot down. And what happened there, Jack, with that, that well, trip? We were, we were making a, a U-boat run on Hamburg where, where they were developing new submarines. And we had made one run there before. And uh, we were attacked by a, a 262 uh, German aircraft, okay. which was a, w the first jet that, w that I knew of. Oh, okay. uh, and he blew us, a, blew us in half. Gosh, and you parachuted out, Jack, or? Yes. Uh, uh, he blew us, uh, our tail gunner, the tail came right off the plane. Oh this, wow. These things I found out after. Right. Um, when we were hit, uh, I went up the, to the pilot seat and he was, he was killed. Oh, okay. And uh, I went down, my, one of my jobs was to pull the escape hatch. Right. Pulled the escape hatch and the airplane flipped over on his back. So me and the bomb aimer were in the nose uh, and the escape hole was above us. Oh, no. um, and it was a split second thing, but he took me and threw me through the hole. Oh. And uh, when I cleared, I pulled my rip cord. And on the way down, uh, I still had <laughs> the ring in my hand. And I. I threw it away, and since then I've often thought I wish I had a <laughs> held kept on that. to it. Yeah, but I'd likely would have been lost anyway. Right. It's uh, mm -hmm. And did everyone else in your crew get out? The ones that could. The bomb aimer, he he uh, to get out, he pulled his chute and put the the umbrella chute into the hole and sucked himself out. Oh my God! The tail gunner which was away from the plane, he, he was able to, to, uh, to parachute out. And the wireless operator, which sits right behind the pilot, he, he was blown out when, when we were hit, and he, he, was, uh, he uh, parachuted, and he was all right. Oh. The, the navigator made it up our gunner, uh, and pilot were killed. Did you know? Did you know who had survived until after the war, or did you just find all this out after you? Did you uh, see any of them after you landed, Jack, when you parachuted out, or? Yeah, we're we I was taken prisoner right as soon as I came down. It was a daylight raid, and uh, I was taken prisoner. They seen me coming, uh, and uh, the other boys were the same. We we got together probably two or three days afterwards. Oh, okay. And we went, they took us interrogation and walked and whatnot. And we ended up on the Baltic. Um, in a camp there. In, in a prison of war camp. Mm -hmm. And when, when was, was this still in 44 or was this? This in 45. In the end of March 45. And all of you were, went to the same camp then? No, all of us, yeah. Yeah, the four, four of us ended up in the same camp. And I keep in touch with, with uh, Tail Gunner and my bomb aimer. But uh, the wireless operator, we have never, none of us have heard where he went to or where, uh, so we don't know where he is. Oh. Yeah. Like yeah. to know, but don't yeah. know. I suppose we could pursue it and maybe find out. I don't know. We never have, though. Mm -hmm. And not that very long ago, my, my grandson, who is in the Air Force now, and he's stationed at Coal Lake, and he's a computer buff as well, 
and he got a hold of some information on our flight, uh, oh. and we found the the historian that he got visiting with on the computer told us where our navigator and uh, mid upper gunner were buried, the plot number and everything. We didn't know. Oh. The the pilot was never never found. So we don't know. We have no idea. It, uh, yeah. But he must have left the plane if he was never found, because the other two were. So yeah. it. Uh, hmm. And what were you were you thinking anything when you were parachuting down, or were you, did it happen so fast that you just? It was quite quick. Although the descent w with the in the parachute was about a half hour, I would think at least. Oh my gosh. Um, it, it was, uh, we were trained. We knew what to do. Yeah. I did, when uh, when uh, I, I landed, I, I didn't even lose my feet. I just hit, hit my escape and the chute went away. And the, but they were, they were right, right there yeah. with their rifles. And Could you see them when you were coming down? Yeah. The, the broke cloud at about, I would think, maybe, I don't know, 1,000 or 2,000 feet not too high up uh, and I was able to, uh, I knew that I was, yeah, I knew that it, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you see the other parachutes when you were coming no. down? No, no, I didn't. No, because we were in, we were in cloud. For most of the way down. Yeah. Was it pretty cold when you were parachuting down? Do you remember? Yes, that? I guess it was. Uh, when, when, when we were hit, the fire burnt, burnt the back of my trousers and the back oh. of my my uh, flight flight jacket off, oh, no. and I was burned up the back oh. and up one arm. I guess it was cold. I, you you were very happy to be alive, so yeah. I, I I don't recall too much about that. One thing I do recall, um, I was bare, and. Uh, when the I think the first or second night, there was a group of us got together, and uh, the, some of the boys cut pieces off blankets and sewed so that I was covered at the back. Oh. <laughs> that was nice, wasn't it? Yes, it sure was. Did you get medical treatment uh, for your not um, not until I uh, reached the prisoner war camp. Oh, there was no medical doctors for you at the camp, or. Uh, don't recall any, no. And so you were at the camp until the war ended? That was Yes, yes, yeah. About, about two weeks after the war was over, the, the Americans flew us out. out. It, was, oh. it was a pretty big camp and, and mostly Americans. Oh, okay. But you were liberated by... Yeah, the the, actually we were liberated by the Russians. Oh, okay. The Russian army r liberated us, but... It, all they did was just chop down the barbed wire, and we could have. We could have gone, out and, right. and tried to get back, but w we were we were advised the war was over. What was the sense, of uh, of even trying that they would come and fly us out? So, it. Um, and we landed, uh, at Bournemouth, just out of Bournemouth when we came back and put into hospital mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. And and that's when you got treatment for your burns or anything like that? That was the first time you got to a hospital then since? Well, there was a certain, there was a, there was a, a doctor at, on the, the, the prisoner, in the prisoner war camp, um, a British doctor. Oh. And as the story went, he had actually parachuted in and got captured so that he could could help some of us out. Oh, okay. It was, uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure this is true. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the camp that you were at? Staglaf 1. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And did you, how did you feel the day that the Russians came through? Quite a happy day for you? I beg your pardon? Was it quite a happy day for you when the Russians came through there? Or 
We, we had a little indication that the war was winding down. Even before we were shot down, we knew it was winding down. And when, when we uh, heard the, them coming and whatnot with the, with the artillery fire and whatnot, that we, yes, it was, it was quite a happy thing for us, yes. It, uh, yeah, we, uh, we were fairly hungry. <laughs> Was in, in the prisoner of war camp, we had one, one, the came around one a, a day with a, a big uh, cast iron pot full of soup, barley, barley soup it was, and we had bread. That's, uh, and that's, a day that's what we lived on. Was it? But we were all healthy ma young men, so really it, it was the, the prisoner of war camp that were in there for a long time that really suffered. We weren't in there long enough to really suffer that much. Right. Was it quite, did, what was your day like in the camp, if you don't mind me asking, Julia? It was quite monotonous. You could walk out along the Baltic and back because uh, the, 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 they just fenced off the peni a little peninsula into the oh. Baltic. So we could walk five or six miles out and around. Uh, I played a lot of cards and before, well even in the Air Force, I played bridge and, and, and we played, and I got three other fellows and we played bridge. That's oh. about all we did. All you did. Did you still get letters and things like that at the camp or? No, 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 no. Like there, no, uh, no, there was nothing like that. Red Cross did visit our camp once. Oh, they did. But they they had they had all they really had was chocolate bars and cigarettes, um, and I guess uh, that's probably <coughs> all they could carry. But they would they would pick up our names and, and then word would would be sent yeah. back. Right. Yeah. Did and was notice was sent to oh you yeah back here yeah in Canada. They, they knew I was a prisoner yeah. of war. Mm -hmm. And at first, did you just know that he was missing and then found out that he was a prisoner? Yeah, or? And he uh, just said he was missing in that camp. You know, tell him the story. What story? Well, w when, when the notice came that I was missing uh, in town uh, here, no. <laughs> they, I had an uncle that run a store, so the, 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 the telegram, he they got him to bring it down to, to my house. mother and, and Pearl. But when uh, I was liberated, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a different story. They, they whipped it down, you know, I they bet. didn't have to hit. So. <laughs> uh, and we had some good friends right across the road. Um, and one of the boys had joined the army with me. Mm -hmm. And Pearl went over there. Um, they weren't running over there and, and uh, Mrs. McKenzie was out taking lunch because they missed the time. And she saw me fly across the road and she says, I bet you she's got news that Jack's okay. So, mm -hmm. And of course, everybody was jumping up and down I bet. when I got there, you know. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> this would be two, at least two weeks after the war was over. Oh, okay. What, do you remember what day it was when you left the camp? Was no, it? No, I don't. No, I, I don't really <coughs> know. And, and how long was the trip back? You were just flown back to England? Right? Oh, yes, yes, it, just a few hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then t how long were you in hospital in England once you? Oh, just a couple of weeks uh, until they were sure that I was healthy enough to go on leave and then I was sent on leave and oh. then posted back to Canada. And you came back on, on the ship yeah, back to Canada. Yeah. And how long was that trip? Oh, it was fine. We was yeah we had uh, yeah we 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 actually had it was the nicest trip of the bunch. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Oh well, sure you were coming home. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And did you come back to Halifax? Was yeah, we came got? to Halifax. Yeah. What was? Were there people there to greet the? Oh board? yes, yeah, yeah. They met. I guess they met all the troop ships that came in. It. Um, mm -hmm. 
What was it like to know that you were back in Canada? Were you pretty excited about that? or? Well, of course, <laughs> we were military people and we didn't really know. And the war was still on Definitely. with Japan. So we, yes, we were, yeah, I was quite happy to be, to be back. It, uh, Did, were you, were you thinking that maybe you'd have to go back into service at all to go to Japan or? or well, we didn't know. Right. Uh, and we would go if we had to go. It, uh, but that ended before the, the time before it was even, yeah. It, uh, so then you got to Halifax and took the train back here mm -hmm. to Minneota? Right to Minneota. And well, wait a minute. I, I think, uh, no, I, I came to. You came to Winnipeg and I went in to meet you. you know? Yeah, but I stopped. I stopped. Um, <laughs> at Three Rivers or somewhere for a few days too. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just re don't remember. I, yeah, I, 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 I went to some base somewhere, I just forget now. And, and then to Winnipeg? And then took my leave, yeah. And then Pearl met you Pearl in Winnipeg? Pearl met me in Winnipeg, yes. Mm -hmm. And, then and then I was quite happy. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> and then back here to Minneota, were you yes. discharged then shortly after? The well, war ended we had, uh, I forget now, six or seven weeks leave. Okay. Uh, and then I just took my discharge. The, war, the, the Japanese war was, was done and we weren't needed, so yeah, I took my discharge. And yeah. came back here to your family farm? Yes. And yes. farmed here ever since, Jack? Yes, I've lived here ever since. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, not right here. We we had our own farm. We bought we bought a, a farm three miles oh, north. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we 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 farmed this as well. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. So Pearl, what was that like with Jack being overseas? Were you? Well, I like as I, I said, I came out in 1943. But if I had realized he was going back again, I don't think I would have came. Right. You know, but um, because we, I really didn't know these people because I followed him from Verdon to Brandon to St. Thomas, and I just met his people at maybe the odd weekend. Right. So it was it was kind of, you know, they were actually strangers to me. Right. Really, right. Know. But anyhow, we got through it. <laughs> did you live here with his parents yes, while he I was did. overseas? Yeah. And did you do any uh, like Red Cross work, or did you? Uh, no, his mother, uh, Jack's mother, was into things like that. Right. You know, like make knitting, knitting and things like that. No, I just helped her on the farm here, which was something new for me because mm -hmm. I was a city girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it was um, everything. So I bet, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Anything else that you'd like to talk about or? Well, I don't know. It's whatever you want to know. Uh, any, other, any other stories or, or people that you met or places that you went or? Oh, there's lots of stories, but just yeah. Uh, yeah. unless a little prompting, I don't know. <laughs> just, uh, you don't want to take two hours. No, <laughs> no. Were there any other raids that you went on um, before you were shot down that you remember? I remember one uh, thousand bomber raid over Essen. I could tell you a little bit yeah, about it. Yeah, what was that like? Might be interesting to, to people that have never seen. Yeah, that's a thousand bomber raid were mostly done on daylight raids. And when you <coughs> arrived over Europe, you could see airplanes, bombers, as far as you could see up, down, east and west. It just was unreal. It was a tremendous sight, really, because most of our raids, a lot of our raids, were 300 or so. And, and the night raids, of course, you never seen any, anything. The daylight raids were a little little different, all right. You've seen everything. Mm -hmm. Mind you, you you didn't bomb on targets. You bombed Pathfinders laid markers and you bombed on markers. It, right. uh, it, 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 we, we 
flew what they called the gaggle formation. The, the Americans flew a V, uh, the same as what the geese fly, but and they, they bombed the master bomber. But we flew in gaggle, that is, each plane did his own job and, uh, and he bombed on certain lights as, mm. it, as he came in to target it. Uh, um, most of the, the targets were covered over with cloud. You did see the fires and whatnot, all right, but to distinguish it at, uh, well, a lot of the bombing, we, we went up as high as 22,000 feet, but most of the bombing was done around 12 or 14,000 right. feet. Um, just so that we were around the oxygen and not the oxygen level 11 was usually we put oxygen on but you could you could maneuver above that all right it uh, depending on your ability to to move and right. handle the, the thin air it uh, I don't know most of the, most of this that life I forgot about for years and years and years lately as some of it has come back to me, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we were glad when we got back to get on with our life and, and farming took up our mind more and raising right. a family and being part of the community. And I became a counselor here. Oh. Served as a counselor for 17 years oh. and a read of the municipality for nine years. Oh, neat. I, uh, I enjoy helping people, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed the life. It uh, uh, it was more or less. It's a little different than it is today with all the regulations and uh, and paperwork they have to do. In those days, uh, we run the municipality. Now, it, an awful lot of it is run from mm -hmm. the fe federal and provincial government. Right. It, uh, which is a sorry thing in a sense. It, uh, I think we have, we've graduated a little too beyond the people. Right. Yeah. Do you think that your time in the Air Force changed your life once you got back at all, Jack? Or, or did you just put it behind you? And it, uh, the military life to me had taught me how to cope with things and how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I still, as I got older, when I was working, of course, I didn't so much. But now I, I walk, I walk a mile at least every day. It, uh, and I'm very happy to be able to do that. It, uh, a lot of the boys can't, but it, uh, uh, the military life, uh, yes, it, it it broadened our minds. There's no doubt about that. It. Uh, certainly did. Mm -hmm. With the Germans having been in a, a camp there, um, a prisoner of war camp, how did you feel about about your enemy, Jack? Did you? They treated us reasonably well, in fact very well as far as I was concerned. It, uh, uh, the interrogation when we first uh, sh were shot down was a little little rough but th this was a, a the war was pretty near over by that you can't judge what happened to us and what happened to somebody a year ahead of us it uh, i think that they their life was far different than ours did you get to know any of the people while you were in the camp or just mainly the the men from your own crew were you Oh yes, I I uh, I got to know a, a few. Uh, yeah, I played cards w with uh, with three fellows that I had never met before, and they 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 were uh, one was a, a Scotch and the other two were were English boys, but they were good card players, and uh, <laughs> we enjoyed bridge. We played a lot of bridge in the Air Force when we were biding our time, waiting to be called. It um, we played a lot of bridge. It was. It was one of the, the games that the Air Force played. <laughs> it, not many people in the Army played bridge. It, uh, and I enjoy the game even today. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Were you glad 
But you had changed for, to the Air Force, Jack, or? Well, it, it, it was, uh, we were training in Winnipeg, in, uh, in Southern England, um, and it got pretty monotonous. Uh, and when this posting came to the Bolton Board that any person with grade 11, 12 education could apply to train, and then we wrote wrote a small exam, which I could have written when I was in grade eight, and <laughs> it, uh, uh, and we were accepted. Uh, Health-wise as well, uh, had something to do with right. it. It, uh, but uh, and then we went into we went into London and uh, and were in in the barracks. Well, they weren't really barracks; they were just uh, we were stationed in London. In Regent Park, and then we went from there to Scarborough, and from Scarborough we went back to Canada. Back to Canada. Mm -hmm. When you were over in England, were there ever any bombing raids where you were? Oh yes, I uh, yeah I seen a little bit of it. Yeah. What were you taught to do in a, in a raid well, like that? Well, we 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 had to we had to protect ourselves and our unit mostly, although. Oh. The civilians and whatnot as well. We did get involved a little, not that much. Our unit, no. Did you go down into shelters during the raids? Oh yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long did did they last all night? Did you? Some of them lasted quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it was quite. Uh, mind you, most of the Canadian Army was in southern England anyway, and it uh, the the sirens were going. And once they they all clear everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Were th was it ever quite close to you, Jack? The bombing or? Oh, I don't think. I think it was actually closer to my my shoe was raised in Glasgow, right. just a stone's throw from Brown Shipyard. So and it was bombed. I think probably she was as close to it as uh, as I was. It uh, no, it, there was never. Well, in the Air Force, uh, they attacked our, our dome once. Oh. Um, but it was mostly strafing. And right. It, was there uh, much damage done to your? Yes, there was quite a bit to planes and, uh, and buildings, yeah. Oh. Mm. That's kind of. Did, did you have fighter planes at your. Uh, no, 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 it was all. Uh, 44. Started as a as a Halifax squadron, and then transferred over t to Lancasters, and they were Canadian built Lancasters. Mm -hmm. the, the plane that we were shot down in was a Canadian built plane that was built just out of Toronto. Oh, neat. Hmm. What do you remember? What it was called, Jack? Your plane that you flew in? Did it have a name or? No, no, we didn't. No. 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 And did was that the plane that you always flew? The one did you no, fly the same wasn't. plane? No, it was It uh, when when we were getting ready to go on this raid, our, our uh, elect electrical systems weren't working too good, so we were transferred to to this. So this was a brand new Lancaster oh, okay. that never flown a raid. It had been flown in England, but it had never flown a raid. So it wasn't the plane you were used to then? Well, there was no difference. No difference. No, no. No. Anything else, Jack, that you no, remember? I, I think can't that's think of anything pretty well. Else. I'm, I'm very happy that that this some of these things do come to life. It, uh, since you've written me, even my family has heard little stories that I never ever told before. It. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, as you get older, you maybe would like to see a little bit of this okay. in writing. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you look back on your service, Jack, what do you think of? Do you think of anything in particular or as a whole? Do you think of? Well, the comradeship that we had uh, both in the Army and the Air Force. Um, not anything else really. Uh, Just friends and. I was happy to take my discharge and mm -hmm. get on with my life. Yeah, it. Uh, although my, 
both uh, the bomb aimer and uh, tail gunner, they went back into the Air Force oh. and served, served their 20 or 25 years. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What made you enlist in, in the Canadian Army at the beginning, Jack? Just I suppose mostly patriotism. Um, I would think patriotism uh, was, uh, it was a thing to do. It, uh, we were just out of high school, and it was a thing to do. And are you glad you did it now, looking oh, back? Oh, yes. Uh, I've seen a lot of the world and met a lot of people, and, and I was married in Glasgow, Scotland. Well, there you go. That's the best reason of all. And we have four children, uh, two, three daughters and one son, two daughters in Winnipeg, and one married a farmer just uh, at Fox Warren. Mm -hmm. And my son uh, is taken over the farm, and we live we live in the house that I built, and I live in the house my dad built. Yeah, so we we've been here for a long time. <laughs> it, uh, it's home. Mm -hmm. It's your home. Yes, it is. and we hope to stay here. Yes. As long as we can. We're going to do a little remodeling so that we can stay here. Right. Keep, keep the original house That's right. in the family. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks very much, Jack. Well, thank you. And uh, I hope we got everything. Mm -hmm. I think we did. Well, we got enough. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.